What's up guys, Asian here again with another build video, and today we're going to be going over the Pet Sork, uh, commonly known as the bane of all raid leads, because pets are a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, however, Pet Sorks do pull very good DPS, uh, possibly one of the highest DPS, tied only with uh, the Magicka Nightblade. Uh, so they are a valuable contribution to the raid team, despite the uh, troubles with pets uh, these days. So just like our other uh, build videos, we're going to be going over gear, uh, CP setups, abilities, and we're going to talk about our rotation a little bit, and then we're going to do a 6 million W parse so you guys can see uh, what rotation will look like in an actual fairly long fight, and uh, also so I can narrate through the, narr the, the, the parse so you guys can kind of see where everything kind of falls into place when we parse things out. So starting off with gear, we're going to be using a Necropotence, uh, so that's just kind of the go-to for pet damage. Um, pet damage uh, basically only scales off of Max Magicka, while it does scale off of spell damage, you need an abnormally large amount of spell damage to boost the damage for your pets. So Max Magicka it is, um, so Necropotence is the best set for pet sorks. Uh, so while it does boost Max Magicka, you aren't getting as much spell damage out of it, so you are giving yourself a little bit less uh, light and heavy attack bonuses. Um, but you are getting uh, some additional boosts to other abilities as well, just due to the way Max Magica scales to uh, your tooltip info. We are using two piece Alambris. I have a health enchant here on my medium piece, just for the, uh, just because I'm using Witch Mother, so I need that additional health. Um, you can see without a pet, I'm sitting at 16, uh, 360. But once I have a pet up and I get that passive from Dedrick Summoning that boosts my uh, max health, I'll be above 17k, so it's not that big of a deal overall. Now for our jewelry, we're going with Master Architect. You can use any of the other Minor Slayer sets or Willpower jewelry. Uh, Master Architect and Moondancer pretty much are identical. Uh, Infallible Aether gives you crit instead of Max Magicka, so on a pet build, that's not going to be as useful for you. I have three... Uh, oops. Put this back on. I have three spell damage enchants, but you can replace one of them with the Regen Glyph to give yourself a little bit additional uh, Magicka recovery if you'd like. For our front bar, we have an infused Asylum's Perfected Lightning Staff with a Fire Damage Enchant, and our back bar, we have a sharpened Maelstrom Lightning Staff with a Weapon Damage Enchant. The best in slot trait for the Maelstrom Staff is actually going to be Nernhone, but I don't have one of those, so I'm using Sharpened instead. Uh, so, quick discussion about your options for your front bar staff. So, you can go with an Asylum's Perfected, a non perfected Asylum Staff, or you can go with a Minor Slayer um, Lightning or Inferno Staff. Uh, depending on what set that you're using, that, as long as it matches your jewelry. Uh, and that's kind of the same thing with Asylum. the Asylum Staffs, you can use Inferno or Lightning. Okay? Especially if you're using Lambrus, because with Lambrus you want more sources of fire damage, so you get uh, a higher chance to proc that fire damage side of the Lambrus proc. Uh, so for an Asylum's Perfected Lightning Staff, you can, I recommend going with the Flame Damage Enchant. And that's because the Concentrated Force set effect will apply Concussed every second cast of Force Pulse. So it's actually going to be applied fairly often. Um, so you don't necessarily need to have a Shock Damage Enchant in order to increase your Concussed uptime. Uh, you can use it anyways, because it does deal a little bit more damage than the Flame Damage Enchant, but Flame Damage also has a chance of uh, inflicting burning as well, so that gives you a little bit of additional DPS there. Um, so now, uh, the other thing that I'm going to want to talk about is if you have an Asylum's non-perfected Lightning Staff, definitely go with the Shock Damage Enchant, because it's every third cast now uh, for the Concussed Uptime. So you're going to want that Shock Damage Enchant to help boost that uptime a little bit more uh, just so you uh, have good concussed uptime for that off balance and boost so I don't recommend using flame damage if you have a non perfected lightning staff now if you have an inferno staff um, I would recommend going with a shock damage enchant uh, but you can go with flame if you'd like at least for a perfected inferno staff but on a non perfect definitely go with shock damage enchant because that light attacks from your inferno staff will make up that source of fire damage and then uh, one thing I want to talk about is sharpened. Uh, as long as you're not over the penetration cap by too much, so 
penetration cap again is 18,200, so if you're above that by about 1k, it ends up being DPS loss uh, when you use sharpened. Uh, just because that extra penetration isn't going anywhere because your target resistance is already at zero and you can't have negative resistance. Uh, so that's something you want to keep in mind when you decide which trait you want to use. So if you, with sharpened, you're going above the penetration cap, you're going to end up losing DPS compared to using Nernhone, Precise, or Infused. And that goes for the front bar as well. Now for our attributes, we have 64 points into Magicka. If you want, you can put four of these points into health if you're using Witch Mothers to get, make your base health up to 17k for when you want to do uh, non-pet builds, but that's up to you. Uh, you. I am a vampire for that extra 10% Magicka regen, uh, but you only need to be stage 2 for that regen, but do keep in mind, uh, I'm just too lazy to feed every time I need to do a raid. Uh, if you do want to stay at stage 4, you will take more damage from fire, so that's something to keep in mind. So you might want to feed depending on how comfortable you are with your survivability. For Mundus, we're going to be using the Apprentice. Uh, you can use the Lover for things like 4-man content or um, or solo VMA stuff. Uh, but again, just like with Sharpened, if you're going over the penetration cap by too much, then you end up losing DPS. So Apprentice is the go-to Mundus for 12-man content. We are using Witch Mothers here, you can see there. Now I am a Breton, and Bretons don't have additional uh, elemental damage to sh Flame, Shock, or Frost. If you want to truly min-max your Sork, you're going to want to go with an Altmer, because Altmer have 4% Shock, Frost, and Fire damage, along with 10% Max Magicka and 9% Magicka Regen. Dunmer come in as a close second, they have 9% additional Magicka, and they get 7% Flame, 2% Shock, 2% Frost. Bretons do get 10% ma Magicka. Uh, Max Magicka, they do get additional spell resistance, so that does help their survivability a little bit, uh, depending on the trial. And they do get 3% reduction in uh, Magicka costs, so they do have a little bit of sustain there, but not as useful as the 9% Magicka regen that Altmer have. And another potential race that you want to consider is also Argonians, because you get health and Magicka, so you can dump points into Magicka and not necessarily worry about meeting the 17k health, but putting points into health. Plus, your potion passive basically gives you a tripod every time you use a potion, so that really helps out with your sustain. Um, so that's something to, to consider. Uh, Argonians aren't going to be able to match any of the previous three races in DPS, but the sustain is pretty powerful with that potion passive. So on to our, uh, our, into our abilities. I'm just going to need to go over them real quick. Crystal Frags, Crushing Shock. Uh, you can use Force Pulse instead for the additional DPS, but you will lose out on the Interrupts, which is a pretty powerful utility. Obviously, we have our pet. Haunting Curse, uh, you can replace this with Prey. I just keep Haunting Curse because I use almost exclusively non-pet builds, um, but this should be Dedric Prey, Inner Light, and Shooting Star. For our back bar, we have Mage's Wrath, Liquid Lightning, familiar again, Blockade of Storms, and Shield, and then we have our Destro Staff Ulti. Uh, so there is kind of a discussion about uh, which ultimate you want to use. Uh, Thunderous Rage or Shooting Star is your primary ultimate. I like to use, uh, basically I like to use uh, Shooting Star for single target and I like to use uh, Thunderous Rage for AoE like trash fights or bosses with adds. Uh, the other thing that I also want to consider is um, kind of, I like to use Thunderous Rage when the boss is above 50 and then go back to um, Shooting Star when it's below 50. That's kind of a personal thing. Uh, I just just like doing it that way, but you can really use either or. You should, will push a little bit more DPS out of Shooting Star because it is a cheaper ultimate, so you can get more ultimates off in the same time frame compared to uh, Thunderous Rage. And it is an additional source of fire damage to get that Lambrus proc. You won't be getting it very often because it's just an ultimate, but it is there and then it's a nice bonus to have. Uh, as for Ward, you can go with Empowered or Hardened. Uh, hardening will give you more survivability and Empowered will give you minor intellect. But if there are two or more Mag Sorks in group, you don't necessarily need to have both of them running Empowered Ward. Only one needs to run Empowered Ward for the group minor intellect buff. So the other Mag Sork can run Harden if you so choose. Now another thing I want to talk about there is um, Inferno Staff. Uh, and where you want to put Mage's Wrath. So if you have Infernal Staff front bar, you can put Mage's Wrath on your front bar instead of Daedric Prey or Haunting Curse. Uh, because of that Ancient Knowledge 8% boost to your single target damage, it'll really help out your execute. Uh, however, um, then you have to move Prey down to your back bar and that kind of changes up your rotation a little bit there. Um, but 
it is a nice boost to your Mage's Wrath, especially in Execute. Um, if Otherwise, if you have two Lightning Staves, just keep it on your back bar, because then you have everything you need for Execute on one bar, so you don't have to change bars at all and do any sort of bar swapping during Execute phase. Uh, now, moving on to our Champion points. 75 into Arcanist, 75 into Tenacity, and these next 80 points can be put into these next three nodes, however you like. 26 into Warlord, 26 into Tumbling, and 28 into Shadow Ward. From our Mage CPs, 34 into Elfborn, 49 into Elemental Expert, 35 into Spell Erosion, 37 into Master at Arms, and 75 into Thaumaturge. Uh, now, I do want to talk a little bit about Spell Erosion, because just like with Sharpened and Lover, if you're going over the penetration cap, you're losing DPS. Uh, so this particular CP setup is for um, the raid, the guild that I run with. We get uh, Ellie Drain. Uh, obviously, um, we also get Infused Torx Crusher and Power of the Light, but we don't get Alkosh. So that's why I have a bunch of points into Spell Erosion. So if you need to take points out of other nodes and put them into Spell Erosion to make up for penetration, take them out of Elfborn first, and then Master at Arms, and then Elemental Expert. Ideally, you don't want to touch Elemental Expert at all. You just want to take them out of Elfborn and Master at Arms. Obviously, you're not going to be touching Th Thaumaturge either because of the exploiter passive um, so that's where you're going to want to pull points out of because a lot of magic dps are running lower crit and pet builds particularly have pretty low crit uh, taking points out of elfborn is going to have the least amount of impact on your overall dps and of course if you need to put points out of spell erosion into the other nodes you just do the exact same thing in reverse elemental expert first then match at arms then elfborn for our red cp the, C the CP distribution that I currently have is a one-size-fits-most. Uh, depending on the content you're running, you're going to want to switch up your CPs a little bit. For instance, if you know you're going to be running Vet Maw, you're going to want to put a little bit more into Elemental Defender and Ironclad, um, and probably take points out of Hardy because you won't be dealing with as much physical damage. If that's something you want to take into consideration. I have 44 into Ironclad, 40 into Thick Skin, 56 into both Hardy and Elemental Defender, and 34 into Bastion. Alright, now to talk about skills, our, our rotation. So for our rotation, it's going to be pretty similar to a, uh, a non-pet build in that you want to do Liquid Lightning first and then block 8. You obviously want to buff up with the potion first and drop your ultimate, but then you want to use Liquid Lightning and then block 8. Liquid Lightning has a 10 second duration, block 8 has an 8 second duration. So you always want to do Liquid Lightning then block 8, so they end at about the same time. If you do it the other way around, you have two seconds of liquid lightning and you end up overcasting liquid lightning resulting in um, basically a waste of magicka more or less. Now the other thing that you're going to want to keep in mind too is when do you use your pulse and when do you use your prey. So your familiar pulse has an 8 second duration and Daedric prey has a 6 second duration. So you can see here 6 seconds and our pulse is 8 seconds. So you want to use pulse first and then Daedric Prey in order to make the most out of your Daedric Prey buff to your uh, pet damage. If you use Prey first and then your Volatile Familiar, you're actually losing out a little bit uh, on your Daedric Prey uptime. You're actually only getting about 5 to 4 seconds of Daedric Prey boost instead of the full 6 seconds instead. So you always want to use Familiar first and then Daedric Prey. Obviously with Haunting Curse, that's obviously not going to be matter too much because you don't get additional boost in your pet damage from Haunting Curse. Now the other thing you'll want to make note of is you want to use Volatile Familiar while you're on your front bar because it will help proc Crystal Frag. Crystal Frag is a pretty big source of DPS uh, on a Magic or Sorcerer, so if you activate it on your back bar instead of your front bar, you won't be able to get that proc off. So you do want to activate your Familiar on your front bar to get that proc. Uh, finally, the last thing I want to touch upon is Crystal Frags itself you always want to prioritize getting that frag proc out as soon as you can. And that's because if you sit on it for too long and you cast another magic ability, it will refresh the duration, basically meaning you wasted your frag proc. So whenever your frag procs, you're going to want to cast it as soon as you possibly can so you can make room for another frag proc to happen. Because uh, a lot of times, if you get lucky, you can actually have two frag procs happen back to back. You do frag proc, uh, force pulse, you get another frag proc, frag proc, so you use that proc again, and then it just um, kind of accumulates itself. That's if you get lucky with RNG. Uh, so if you do happen to get a frag proc that happens right when you have to re-up your dots, it's up to you whether you want to use it and um, drop your dots off for a little bit and then reapply them, or reapply the dots and then just use your frag procs as soon as you swap back to your front bar. That's completely up to you to decide. Uh, I like to 
And I, I do both. It depends on uh, whether I notice the frag proc soon enough before I bar swap. But if, if I have bar swap, I'm just going to reapply my dots and just say, screw it, I'll just use my frag proc when I swap back. So, without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get started with our 6 million par so you guys can get an idea of what the rotation looks like. I'll try to narrate it through it as best I can, but I will be focusing on parsing. So again, we're going to start off with a buff with our potion. Now I am using curse, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether I use curse first or Daedric or my pet pulse. But remember, if you are using Daedric Prey, you want to use your pulse first, and then curse. Or prey, I should say. Again, you want to activate it on your front bar for that extra chance at that frag proc. So I am heavy attacking every other full rotation, but we'll see how long that's going to last because Maxorks have pretty crap sustain. Said I like to use uh, Desra LT if my boss is under 50%. You can see there, I didn't notice the frag proc when I bar swap, so I said screw it, I'll just lay my dots and cast it when I swap back to my front bar. So you can see here, I'm starting to run dry on resources, so I am going to have to start heavy attacking a little bit more. have an extra regen glyph, the sustain problems probably won't be as bad. But now you can see I'm pretty much having to heavy attack every full rotation now. One thing I like to uh, do is I like to enter my execute with at least 50% magicka if I can. If I can. That just helps me uh, execute for a longer period of time before I have to heavy attack. Because remember that heavy attacking uh, is a DPS loss, generally speaking. So while you're on your back bar here, you want to make sure to keep up your dots, which are your familiar pulse. Your liquid lightning and obviously block aid. So that is a 6 million parse with a pet build. Uh, so I kind of narrated that a little bit. This is what we can pull. We pulled 35-2. Uh, so that is partially due to my unfamiliarity, relatively speaking, with the pet build, as well as using uh, curse instead of prey. You will get more DPS if you're using prey instead. So if you take a look here, liquid lightning and light attacks make up the bulk of our DPS, along with blockade of storms. Then we have pet pulse, crystal frags, and haunting curse. So this is why you kind of want to make sure to get those procs off as soon as you can, uh, just because they can hit as hard as, if not harder, than your major wrath explosion, which is down here, unfortunately. Um, so if you do have to break your rotation out, obviously you're going to want to make sure Liquid Lightning is up and your Blockade of Storms is up, followed by your Familiar Pulse. Uh, so those are the top three dots that you want to keep running if you have to break your rotation in order to res somebody or you have to play mechanics or something like that. So if you're in the middle of your front bar rotation, if you still have time left on your dots to finish your front bar rotation, your spammables, then just keep on going with your rotation. Uh, but if you're on your back bar, you, you're going to want to see how much time is left on Liquid Lightning and Block Aid and reapply them if you need to. So that's kind of a, kind of a play-by-ear kind of situation. Mag Sorks are fortunate in that if they do have to break their rotation to res somebody or play mechanics, it's fairly easy to get back into the groove of things. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.